Hey guys, welcome to Outwork. This is Connery. Welcome to the farm. I don't think we've ever showed you guys the farm before. But yeah, this is the farm slash private property. Bunch of deer on it. We've never hunted deer before. So we decided to start. Start today. We're doing uh, a review on the uh, Vortex optics here. Vortex Crossfire 2. It actually says it right here. But it's got the cover on it. Vortex Crossfire 2 crossbow specific. Two to seven by thirty-two. So let's get that kind of started. So kind of in the box, it comes with rings already. So that's a good thing, and it comes with these covers, which is pretty cool. I like them. It comes in black, but I think there's too many logos. It's kind of going crazy there. <laughs> they kind of will overkill. It comes with illumination, which is really good. Some people might like that. You got the red. And got the green but from using it the past two weeks i must say don't depend on it too much for the guys that really want to use them the illumination and then you're, you're coming from say like the eotech or trench or something like that uh the, that you know the illumination is not very good not not in this model uh specifically uh i have another one which is really good here's their higher end model for actual rifles this is the pst and it illuminates just fine. But for that, I mean, you can talk like that. Six hundred dollars scoop versus a two hundred dollars scoop. Okay. Yeah, the the illumination is not very good for the low out low light hours. I'm thinking all right, but from that, you know, all day like this, it's too. It's not bright enough, and there's no night vision mode. I don't know why you would need night vision mode, but I'm just saying, if you guys are for some reason hunting hogs at night with a crossbow, it's not going to be low enough. Just saying. That's a, that's a pretty good uh, critique, I think, for some people, you know, for their, uh, you know, philosophy of use, I guess. If you're going to use it at night, not so good. Okay. Uh, build quality? Build quality, I like. Okay, I do like the turrets. I, like, I even like the caps. I think the caps are pretty good. The turrets. That, here's something you don't always notice. Uh, at least the difference between this and a traditional rifle scope, right, is uh, these are half MOA turrets okay half moa half moa that's pretty good they got a bunch of other use like uh letters here too l12 l10s not exactly sure what that is i mean you could mark them i guess there's a little dot here there's a little dot here but i don't know i didn't use them i guess because i don't use them because you're once you set it you kind of forget it uh, it's not like a traditional rifle scope like my other one I just showed you where we have to Hold over or we have we might have to like adjust them on the fly. We don't have zero stops It's just a traditional turret from what I can tell now, Unlike this one, which is really fancy This is super fancy Okay, that's like a That's some military stuff <laughs> Okay on a really expensive mount too. I think it's American defense right there I Had it for a little bit came off my AR-15. So yeah, that's that's pricey that's that's a nice penny but this one uh for what for what you, i'm trying to do with it it's fine um i really like the features that they have built in on it i thought this scope was i thought the scope was really well thought out for for what it is and for what the crossbow hunter needs okay because i feel like before coming into this uh, scope i felt like a traditional scope will do just fine but in the reality of everything it won't because the 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 crossbow arrow drop versus a bullet drop is completely different and and we're talking yards instead of 50 to 60 yards it's like 10 yards difference between your two shots and you're, you got to compensate two three inches four inches five inches it gets pretty crazy right so so they made it real easy on you basically i'll flash up i don't know if i have the manual here Let's see if we got the manual. They'll do like a. Here we go. Here we go. So if you look at the reticle, the reticle goes 40, 40 in the middle, 30 on top, 20, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. I don't know why you'd ever shoot 100. Um, I don't know why. But they're talking about this is the XBR 2 reticle. And what you do is you, uh, you, you set up your target at 40 and you zero on that and you basically just move it you move your target to 
any other range, preferably for me, I bring it in because I don't shoot any over 40 anyways. So bring, I brought it into 20. So I was zero to 40, I brought it into to 20 and I shoot it. I shoot it at what my advertised speed of my bow is, right? So the advertised speed of my bow is supposed to be up to 390, okay? So I put a 390 at zero to 40. I bring the target into 20 and I shoot that with a 20 holdover, right? 20 holdover is pretty high above the, uh, the, the, the crosshair. And I shot high. So if you're shooting high, you want to crank it down. So, yeah, so which basically means, okay, let me explain that before, you, before I lose guys, okay? So this is a two to four, two to seven scope, but the thing is you're using the, you're using the, you use the magnification to dial in the crosshair, okay? Or you can use the speed of the arrow to dial in the crosshair. So like I said, my, my scope was advertised at 390, so I had to set way over here, like that spot was actually right here where it's supposed to be set. But once I shot it at 20, I knew that this crossbow is way lower than 390 because I had a feeling too, because don't get me wrong, I didn't even buy this crossbow. This crossbow was given to me like as a loaner from a friend. And full disclosure, I'm not center point. I'm not vortex associated in any way. This is 100% unpaid. This is just, I paid for all this myself. So, I put a pretty nice scope on a pretty crappy crossbow, is what a lot of you guys are probably going to say. But regardless, the crossbow is rated at 390, up to 390. But after testing and calibrating everything, I find out my crossbow is actually probably less than, uh, it's going to be about that 320, 315 feet per second. And once I got that dialed in on the scope, I didn't know how good that was, that system was or what they did to the scope uh, holdovers. So I, zero to 40, I brought it into 20, uh, brought it into 20, shot high, cranked the magnification down, okay? Crank the magnification down to bring the uh, the crosshair up or down. I can't remember exactly what I did, but yeah. So did what I need to do to bring the impact to, oh no, bring the crosshair to where the arrow impacted, which means I cranked it down and to bring the basically you crank it down and it brings it up in terms of angles i think that's how it works i could be wrong somebody somebody fix that if it's wrong but anyways i got it i got it what i thought it was supposed to be and then shot again it was right on i was like wow okay okay i got it i got it so shoot another arrow 20 right on i'm like, all right so 20 is right on 40 was right on until i cranked the magnification so I'm like, all right, let's try the 30. So I move my target out to 30, right on. Go back to 40, check the 40, it's still right on. So now I'm thinking, all right, let's test the 50s. So I, I bring it out to 50, I shoot the 50, and it's right on again. And I'm just like, all right, I'm dialed. I am dialed. I'm dialed. I'm ready to go. The scope works, works really good. The glass on it is all right. The glass is not, the glass is a $200 glass, okay? Uh, it's not a $400, $500 glass. Uh, it'll definitely do good because a lot of people talk about the glass on your rifle optics They need really nice glass if you're gonna do precision shooting at distance If you're not doing precision shooting at distance, my opinion is you can go with a cheaper glass And that's kind of where crossbows kind of come in because you're not doing anything over 100 yards, all right, you're not doing anything over 100 yards. You're not doing anything over 50 yards in my opinion The deer move before the arrow gets there yeah, I said it. Deer, deer did it to me the other day. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of the review on it. Let me give you guys uh, some close-ups on it. I did have some problems. I cranked down. Initially, I cranked down these two screws. And then a couple weeks later, maybe after another like couple weeks and juggling it around the back of the truck a little bit, uh, these crew two screws kind of backed out a little bit. So you might want to put some Loctite in them. Some Loctite blue, possible. And then uh, crank those down. I don't think you need Loctite on those, but that should be okay. But other than that, I do like the caps. Even though they do kind of get in the way sometimes, I do like the caps because it's the way I transport them. I think there's way too many logos on this thing. Three logos on it. I think that's a little much. A little on the excessive side. But the scope looks good. You know, 
in terms of feel and everything, it's not hard to crank this or crank these. It actually feels about right, uh, right where they need to be. Because I've had a couple, of, this is probably my third Vortex scope between me and my brothers. And we've had everything else too. Boruses, Nikons, and everything else. And it feels right. Because I've had scopes where it's almost impossible to turn these knobs. And this one just feels about right. You know, it's right where it needs to be. And, uh, yep. I approve. I mean, I like it. Because if I didn't, I'd send it back and I'd do a, instead of a thumbs up, I'll give it a thumbs down. You know, but this one, this one gives a thumbs up for me. Here we go. Thumbs up. It's a thumbs up for me. I like it. I guess I didn't know how to use it at first. And I missed a couple of bucks, but now that we've got it, I think, uh, I think it's time to take down Mr. Buck here and, uh, and tag out, you know? At least tag in. Got a tag in. I didn't even get my first tag in yet. So, We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens.